at the present time that we're responding to five what we call grade three emergencies. It's where we put all hands on deck, uh, deploy our best and brightest, our A-teams. I am declaring the current outbreak of Ebola virus disease a public health emergency of international concern. Nobody knows when the next pandemic will hit the world, but what we know is that uh, given the amount of viruses circulating in the world, given the amount of travel that are ongoing every day, we know that one day we'll have another pandemic. The idea is simple. Every country, every institution has to be ready to respond to any emergency. Risk communication is an integral public health response to emergencies. Without proper emergency risk communications, you cannot accomplish emergency response. And we have to deploy teams that can do everything. Welcome to the third annual Emergency Communications Network Free Forum Training. It's so nice to see so many of you here. The Emergency Communications Network is a very unique group of people that we've built here at WHO. It's actually people who are very good communicators in and of themselves before they come to the network. But what we do is we pre-train them so that we can deploy them into emergencies. So we're going to talk about the overarching context, the humanitarian context, the international frameworks under which emergency risk communication comes, right? And how do all of these areas health communications, health promotion, social mobilization, community engagement, media, social media, web, interpersonal, partner, donor, how do all of this work together? The whole course is 10 days and the first uh, six to seven days are really intense classroom courses. So this is really about a lot of technical, practical experience sharing content but it also frames how humanitarian crises and outbreaks have really changed. We look at international frameworks and agreements for humanitarian and public health response. My name is Suleiman Kone. I work in Côte d'Ivoire, au the Bureau Pays de l'OMS, for 14 years now. I had the chance to share my knowledge and experience in Central Africa, where there was a civil war. I had the also occasion to be deployed in Guinea dans le cadre de l'épidémie de la maladie à virus Ebola, où je m'occupe de mobilisation sociale, engagement de communauté. Être mis dans cette situation, vous vous rendez compte qu'il y a des choses que vous avez faites que vous n'avez pas bien fait, parce que vous ne saviez pas. Parce que si vous aviez eu ce cours-là avant, vous aurez agi autrement. Bonsoir, madame. Nous avons déjà commencé des investigations autour de cette personne malade. I can say that it's really one of the best training in communication in emergency within WHO, but even out of WHO. This year, we are paying a special focus on pandemic influenza, because we know if there is an influenza pandemic, when there is an influenza pandemic, having these pre-trained experts, who are also very networked and joined up together, can really make a difference. I think there are elements to this training which are very important. The first is risk communications experts and public health experts can gather all the skills that they need to be able to respond in emergency situation. And the second part of the training, which is a simulation exercise, allows those skills to be tested in a nearly real environment. What we want this to be is a safe learning environment which people can make mistakes step back, consider what they did, and learn. We've received information about an outbreak of H7N9. The country of Zambria does not have much information on the virus, so we're going to need to do some talking points on that. So the three-day simulation exercise is trying to mimic what communications experts would have to do in a real public health emergency and in a pandemic. So this means communicating with a wide range of audiences, government officials, community members, healthcare workers, medical doctors, donors, partners, and of course, a great deal of interactions with the media. Yes, that I can get. So WSO have been working closely with the manufacturers to um, provide this vaccination as fast as possible. In my role as a mentor, basically I have to observe the teams and try to um, ensure that the team dynamics are going smoothly. I was trained in ECN 2013 
And I found it really useful because the first few days that I was deployed to Liberia last year, the situation was changing so quickly and it reminded me of the simulation exercise where a lot of things were happening in a very compressed time. In this training, we also try to prepare people to deal with any challenge they might meet in the field. So we have this exercise, which is basically an ambush situation. This is a 20-30 minute exercise where they feel a threat to their personal well-being. What are you doing here? What we do is at the end of that, we debrief them. We talk about what types of things they should be doing in terms of a good security measures. To tell the truth, I've really been shocked because for the first time of my life, I've realized that this can happen in reality. They really make it quite intense and it feels very realistic and people end up playing their role so seriously because you learn a lot from that. Mr. Minister has introduced, we have come to bring you good news. We went into a community situation where the whole community was gathered to celebrate the arrival of vaccines and that situation turned into a very threatening situation quite quickly. Everybody will be vaccinated but we are going to start in phases. And you know, we learned how as a team you can't be divided by what's happening around you and you have to always be mindful of the security in these situations and how do you get out of these incidents safely. What state of risk communication strategy should we take here? Outrage. So giving them facts and false facts is a no-no. Nous avons partagé trois jours intenses ensemble. Donc le premier sentiment, c'est vraiment d'appartenir à un réseau de communicateurs dans le monde de l'humanitaire, dans tous les domaines, dans toutes les organisations, parce que non seulement il y a l'OMS, il y avait aussi d'autres partenaires qui étaient là. Donc on, on, on sent qu'aujourd'hui, on n'est plus seul en train de travailler. Ça, c'est déjà un sentiment très fort. I learned a lot about working as a team. Last night, we stopped the exercise and we started debriefing. So what's happening today is we're spending a little time with each individual participant, uh, a group of resource people, and we're letting them tell us what they learned, not just in terms of about working in emergencies, but about themselves, how they can work under this kind of pressure. And we give them feedback. Quite a lot of them are having immediate assignments, the rest will be put on a roster. They will be asked to commit to being available for at least two months of the year. And so this, this commitment and this journey begins.